Chapi. Hola. Hey, Chapi, me. How's it? No, I'm okay, man. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Surviving so, under this lockdown. Yeah, surviving under this lockdown. You <laughs> can't, can't move, you can't do anything. Hey, I can imagine. For most people that are used to moving around and stuff like that, now you're stuck at home. Mm. There's certain things that you can't do. You understand? It's But how are you holding up? I'm surviving, man. Uh, mm. Been home ever since then. I think I only went out twice. Sure. So I'm trying to, you know, adhere to what the president has said. Yeah. yeah. And, so and I'm sure it's it's the first time in years where you've been at home for 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 so long. Yeah, of course, yo. Uh, I can't be missing out, man. Like, mm. uh, you know, good to see some friends and all that. It's unfortunate mm. now I can't, I can't, you know, watch football. I can't do it. Yeah, but what do you do just to keep your mind at ease and relax? Because most of people at this time, it also anxiety creeps in because there's less movement and everything like that. You know, I'm, I'm only trying to obviously follow up with, on what's happening around the world, especially mm. you know football-related stuff. Yeah, mm. watching you know, Sky Sports, uh, watching uh, Super Sport Blitz and all that. So yeah, what? Can what? <clears throat> mm -hmm. You can say. What? No, I'm j I was just gonna ask. What's what's the fa what's your favorite program that you love to watch during this time? That you know, every time you go and watch the TV, you switch on and then you watch, and it relaxes you. To be honest, <laughs> I've been only Netflix because <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> to watch on TV. So yeah, I've been hmm. Netflixing, man. Uh, Other than that, I would like I would try to watch you know, some old games. Okay. Like Super Sport has been trying to show some old games. Yeah, and and I'm sure you, I'm sure you've watched also the old, the retro games that are also played by SABC, where games from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, and maybe yeah. it's games that inspired you to play the game. Yeah, of course. Um, I was watching this other one. They like to play it. Uh, yeah, pirates and swords. I can't remember which year it was, mm. but yeah, I I do still enjoy. It. So yeah, man, it's been hectic. Yeah, and. Yeah, yeah, it's been crazy, it's been crazy. You you come from a small area in the Free State called Brentford. Um, I think it's only you and Mama Winnie that are from there that are well known. <laughs> um, how is it like growing up in that small area of Brentford? Yo, yeah, bro, it's it's tough. It's it's one of the places that I neglected. Not, but not just you know, um, Brentford. Uh, The free state, as a mm. whole, I think uh, it's one of the of the provinces that's been not. Um, but yeah, it's, it was tough growing there uh, with no hope of of turning into a professional footballer. Mm. But then, you know, quite willingly, I I managed to to succeed. So yeah, yeah it was a bit tough. And, and and for you growing up there and also playing football, what motivated you? Because you know sometimes youngsters, if they see someone close to them or in their close proximity, they're like, okay, you know what? I want to be like that person when I grow up. What motivated you and also what made you like really really follow football? <sighs> to be honest, uh, like I just said, now uh, one had no hope of turning into a professional footballer, mm. and one of the things that i enjoyed much more uh it was cricket i used to play cricket a lot than, um. uh, than football but then after i completed my matric uh that's when i started getting uh involved into football mm. uh when, what inspired me most was that uh you know that there was hope hope started you know creeping in uh we bought a status in the castle league uh hell, look at this one who's this pelezino aron lepele former from from 10 celtic play is that him, him. wow that's him. 
Yeah. It was on a Friday, I think, and uh, Marisbeck City at that time they were they were flying. They mm. were doing so well. Um, the stadium was packed. I was nervous, and it came only to my surprise that look, I, you know, Arrows was interested in me. Um, mm. The feedback I got was that you know I did well uh, tactically. I was you know, uh, doing what I was supposed to be doing. And then they put up an offer. Uh, then the negotiations started. We we struggled to get a clearance from Young Tigers for some time. Mm-hmm. And I was in Devon just training, not doing anything, struggling to get a clearance. Uh, I think it was for like eight eight months. Wow. And then... Uh, yeah uh, just training not not playing uh, games and then this other time uh, it was on a friday the following day we were playing chiefs in in joburg and then in the morning after the session uh, i got called to the office and then bramesh the late uh, rocky called me uh, to his office and then he told me look everything has been sorted and guess what you are in the team you are going wow. to play and then, yeah um, I was in the team we flew down to Joburg uh, before they changed the stadium to Soccer City uh, what was it FNB FNB stadium. FNB old FNB stadium yeah yeah and then that's I think that's when I made my debut for and and I'm sure the eight months must have been um, stressful for you. You know, you're part of a team, but you're not signed to the team to play and stuff like that. What what kept you going? Did at some point feel like you know what, maybe it's not for me. I should go back home. Actually, a day before then, before I got that uh, that call to the office, that's uh, that's when I I told uh, Mr. Madlala, I said, look. It's not working. Let me rather go back to finish my contract in Bloomfontein, and then I'll come mm. back if you guys are still interested in me. And then he was like, "No, nah, don't worry. I will. I will sort it out." And then the following yeah. day, I think, I think on the evening of that day, that's when they started negotiating, and then they came mm. to an agreement. So yeah, um, he's one of the guys that played a huge role in my career. Yeah, as as you said, your first game was against KZ Chief. You spent almost, I think, four seasons at Golden Arrows. Um, how was your time at, at, at Golden Arrows? And because Golden Arrows is known as like the team that plays um, Tika Taka football, Abafana Best 10. How was it like playing there? And your most memorable moments being part of the club? Yo, bro, I think that's again one of the teams that I enjoyed my football there. Uh, under the management of, of obviously Cabo and then Cabo left and KA Mangova. It was fun. I enjoyed my time over there. We 
you know, everything had to start from training with uh, Coach uh, We never used to kick the ball from the goalkeeper. Uh, we would try, and Coach Manuel would say, I want you to get used to this. Um, but one, one thing I can tell you is that one day it will happen that they intercept the ball from from the back and then they will score. But I'll accept it. But that's what I want you to get used to, start playing mm. the ball from the back. So from the air, man, it was, it was fun. Uh, we had the likes of Bostaname, Labilam, Kumbu was still playing. Uh, they still playing actually. Papi Zotwani, Tokozani Mishemu. Those were good players, man. So yeah, I had so much fun there. Yeah. And after spending those years with, 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 with um, Golden Arrows, you went to trial at Fulham. I think mm. it was two week trial. And then they were impressed with you. And mm. it, I think maybe it's a norm here in South Africa that if you, if you play for a team like Golden Arrows, the so-called small teams, before you move overseas, you must go and play for the big job teams so that you get the experience, some call it like that. Um, for you, was it a matter of you want to go overseas straight from Arrows or you want to go experience Joburg and then go overseas? To be honest, what you just said is true. You know, uh, we, the, the soccer players tend to, to limit themselves thinking, you know what, I need to be playing for Chiefs Pirates before I make my move to, to the bigger teams in, in Europe or wherever around the world. So, um, by then I was playing for the national team, so it happened that we went to play against Australia in 2008. Uh, we went, we played, and then uh, I think a week after, um, again, I got called to the office by Osis Mato. She told me that, look, uh, in Fulham has, 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 has made an offer, but they would like you to come back to go back to, to the UK and, and and have a try with them. So yeah, we started doing the visa applications and all that. And then I flew back to London. I had a two-week training sessions with Fulham. Um, then I, I flew back. And then they, they said, look, we, we are interested in you. We want to sign you. So mm. um, obviously there's some, some limitations. In, in some of your, you know, your football. So they sent some program uh, that I had to follow. Uh, and then, yeah, I went back in 2009. I signed a three-year contract with them. Was, was it not um, a bit scary for you when you went over there, like going straight into the premiership? It was, you know, um, but then the good thing was that like when I got there, uh, obviously I didn't know what, what was the environment going to be like. Uh, yeah. then, then I met my, you know, my, my fellow African brothers who made it easy for me. Well, yeah. Dixon there too, who John Panzel. Uh, John Panzel, he was there. For those who don't know him, he was the assistant coach of Skiff at Chiefs. Uh, a few years ago, so they made it easy for me, you know. And then uh, after that two-week trial, you know, we obviously kept contact with John. And when I went back in 2009, it was much, much more easy, much, much more easy. <laughs> the guy says, "I need a haircut." Barbers are closed. Where are you gonna get a haircut? <laughs> Nowhere. I don't know why no one hear me. It's scary of them, bro. Come on. <laughs> Shouldn't be known on my shop really so <laughs> yeah yeah and 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 also um prior to your move to to Fulham, did you speak to any guys that were playing already that side um guys like Mbazo, just to get an advice on how things are done that side, what to expect, and what did they say to you um yeah, one of the people that I spoke with was um uh, uh, because my I wasn't happy with my contract, you know. But uh, he, he advised me 
you know, saying, look, um, you, you may play, you, you may, you may, you know, uh, get interest from other teams and, and then, you know, we get a big, big, big contract from them. But just, this is a big opportunity that you can miss out on. Mm. And then, yeah, he obviously again, uh, advised me, you know, uh, on what to do when I get there, this and that and that. So, yeah, he's also one of the guys that played a huge, huge role in, in, in motivating mm. me to come to the league. Yeah. And playing away from home, what is the most difficult thing that a player faces? <sighs> Look, I think, I think it's all up in the mind, you know. What is it that you want in life? Uh, again, that's one of the things that the guys are struggling with. They, they become homesick. The weather, the food, it's bad. But you get used to it. It was difficult for me in my first few months. Uh, I was living in the hotel. I think I was living in the hotel for like three months. So do you understand that, you know, eating hotel food every day for three months, there's no pub, there's nothing there. So, yeah, it was a bit difficult, but, you know, I, I got used to it. Uh, sometimes John would invite me to his house, even though I wasn't eating South African food, but there was African food. So, yeah, he made it easy also for me. I adapted quickly. I met a few South Africans. And they threw me around. So I then in the, I, I started enjoying to live there. Um, it would take me some time to come back home to see them. So to be honest, man, it's, it's all in the head. If, yeah. It depends how much you want it. Hmm. Yeah. And after everything was done, you signed, you get your first game. I think it was against West Ham. And... Yeah. It was not a great start, if I can put it like that, because on your first game, I think on the 49th minute of the game, you got a red card for, apparently it was a push or something on Scott Parker. Um, was that baptism of fire on your side, like, welcome to the English Premiership? Yeah. Uh, that guy, <laughs> that guy, uh, that guy, you know, I, I used to like him, Scott. Uh, he was a good player. Nasty again at the same time. So on the day he was, you know, he was he was the nasty Scott Parker. Yeah. Uh, and you know the coach was also furious on the bench, like you know, just kick him also do this and that and that. I don't know what happened then, and then he he started you know like pushing me, and then. I think that's after that's just after they implemented the law that says if you if you put your 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 hand on on the player's face it's a red card. Uh, mm. So just you know, not even a slap, just pushed him. Then I got a red card. Yeah, is 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 that moment one of the moments maybe you say on your as a football in your footballing career that you you regret doing because. It was your first game and everyone was looking at this guy that's coming from South Africa and then on his first game, he gets a red card. Not really, because after that, he taught me, because we, in, in, in South Africa, I don't know if they do it here, uh, but uh, I'm sure, like, you know, every year before the start of the season, the, the football associations would bring the referees to the teams and then you know um, remind them of the laws and if there's any new laws that are going to be implemented mm. this uh they they need to you know address them to to the players um so i think had i known uh that um what i did to scott was 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 a, a sending off uh thing then i wasn't gonna you know i wasn't gonna do it but yeah. um yeah it taught me after then that you know like look and then i had to consult with the code of conduct then yeah it taught me not to obviously <laughs> slap someone again in the next <laughs> game 
after my suspension. Yeah. But then, yeah, um, yeah, it taught me a lot. Yeah. There's a, a question here from Mube Wangembe. Scott Parker, is it real? Uh, that it that's, my, that's my brother. <laughs> All players will jump in, in a train to a game. So use the train to go to a game. I don't understand. Is it real that the team imagine all players? Do you want to ask if it? No, like no, you no, guys no. took a three. <laughs> no, obvious. We when we travel, it's either we travel by, by by bus or we travel by train or by flight. But uh, in in most cases, we would use the train. Um, yeah. Also, um. <laughs> Until you change the law, until you change the law in England. <laughs> no, and also, you 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 spoke about your coach. Um, at that time, it was coach um Roy Hodgkin. Yeah. Um, he's he's known for being tough, being strict, but also has his funny side to it. How was it like for you to 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 work with that guy? Because I think at some point he coached England. Yeah, Roy. Um. The good thing again about him was that he 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 liked everything again about South African footballers and and South Africa as a whole. I think apparently he he he, he used to play in South Africa. Uh, I think he said he said uh, Pretoria Kelly's or something like that. And mm. uh, he he told me that his son lives in Cape Town and he he. he he likes coming to to South Africa, so yeah. Um, he also played, you know, a, a huge role. He was more again like a father figure. Um, we would spend more time in the office, also trying to to uh, advise me there and there. Uh, mm. But yeah, man, he was he was a good coach. Uh, that that first season, we we I think we finished top. Eight, and again we did well in the uh, UEFA Europa League. Uh, mm. We went to the final. Uh, we lost it to Atletico Madrid, a two-one. So yeah, man, he, he was a good coach. You know, uh, you can even still see now at Crystal Palace he's doing well. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's someone that I rate highly. Your first season, you played, I think, 14 to 16 games. Second season, I think you got one appearance. And what was going through your mind then now? Because first season, you were in the mix of things. Second season, not really playing. Yeah. Did, was it a stressful moment of being in England and having doubts? Not really, because... Uh, in in England, you you get fired as a coach. You a new coach comes in with his new stuff, and he's given a budget to 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 bring in players that they want. So unfortunately, the second season, uh, Marquise came in. Um, Roy got a, an offer at Liverpool. He went to Liverpool. So. Uh, Mark brought in a few uh, players in, uh, so I stayed for a couple of of months, I think, and then I said, "Look, I need to to get some game time. You know, I can't be training every day without you know a uh, game time." And then I I spoke with my agent, who then um, went to speak to Doggy Freeman at, at Crystal Palace. They were still in the championship. So yeah, we we had a chat about it, and then uh, yeah, I went to Crystal Palace on loan. Yeah, and also with Crystal Palace, you you won promotion to the EPL. That must have been a memorable moment, from not playing and then going a step uh, a league down, uh, playing so many games and then getting promotion to the EPL. Yeah, uh, what what happened then was that when I went to Crystal Palace. Uh, they were also trying to get out of the relegation zone. Um, uh, it was tough, man. It was tough. So, yeah, I went there. Um, we played. We played a couple of games. I think there was like 
13 games left, something like that. And then I remember this last game that I played for Palace uh, on that season was against um, Cardiff at home. We needed we needed to to win that game so bad. And then uh, yeah, um, I I happened uh, to what was, what happened? Um, yeah, yeah, I scored. I scored on that game. Uh, I think that was the game that had confirmed that we are out of the relegation zone. Mm-hmm. And then on a Monday, um, the coach called me to to his his office, and then he said, "Look, man, uh, I'm so so grateful you know, for what you've done for me and the team. We have um, two games left, so I don't mind you, KG, going back to Fulham because I was on loan. I don't mind you going back to Fulham." train or if, if if they agree at Fulham that you go back home to South Africa to spend some time with the family, then you can do so. And then, yeah, I went back to, to Fulham, you know, and then I told, um, at that time it was, it was Martin Yol. They had then sacked uh, uh, McHughes. So when I told Martin, I said, look, uh, the season is almost over. You guys also have got like six more games left and then at Paris, you know, they are happy. Uh, so what do you want? Then Martin was like, look, man, um, it's fine. You can go home and go spend some time with the family. And then I came back to South Africa and then uh, the coach from Paris called me again and said, look, man, if, if ever they don't want you at Fulham, I would really, really want to sign you. I want you to help me to get promotion to, to the APF. So, and then, yeah, I came back. Um, I first couple of days, I, I trained with, with Fulham preseason. And then I, I went to talk to the coach, Martin. I said, look, if, if ever I'm not going to be in your plans, just let me know. Uh, you guys can make a deal with Paris. I can move down to Paris. And then, yeah, the deal happened. Mm. And, and how assuring is it for, for a player when a coach says, you know what, Go home, think about it. I want you in my team. I need you for the plan that I have so that we, I can go win promotion. That also gave me hope and, and some kind of assurance that, look, I'm going to play, even though he was in the championship. But um, I rate the league very, very highly. It's the most intensive league I ever played in. And... Um, yeah, man, I came back, we signed uh, Doggy. We, we, we started doing well. We were winning games, winning games, winning games. I think after the 10th game, I think we were still number one that season. And then Doggy got, uh, got a, an offer from Bolton. Uh, he then had to leave to Bolton. And then I was, I was getting a bit worried that, like, look, this guy is doing so well. He called me here, and again, he's going. Should I maybe ask him to go with him to Bolton or stay at Palace? Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, then they brought in Ian Hull. And then we continued doing so well, winning games. Um, and yeah, towards the end, that's when we started dropping points uh, up until we, we fall in the playoff position. Um then we had the play playoff position was tough, man. It was tough. Brighton were the favorite. So we played at home against Brighton. We drew 0 0. So they were the, the favorite for for thing for, for promotion. The, yeah, for winning the second leg game at home. So yeah, we went to Brighton, we won 2-0. And then, yeah, man, we went to the final, played against Watford. Again, we were still the underdogs. Played Watford. Uh, I think I got injured in the 17th minute. Then I got worried. I said, look, yeah, I, can't, I can't help my team get, you know, not, not saying that, like, shit, if I go out, they're not going to do anything. I had to believe in them. Man. We, we had a strong squad. Uh, we had fighters. And then, yeah, man, we won, got promoted. 
Yeah, that, that must have been great. Um, Spiro says, KG, did you ever experience any form of racism in the EPL? If yes, how did you deal with it? No, no, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. Um, I've never. Uh, the only thing that I've, I've received are the insults. I can't mm. say yeah. I can tell. There's kids here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kune knows when when you went to play against uh, Australia, uh, your Kune is a crybaby. When you play against <laughs> Australia in England, yo, they, you know the stadiums here. Like when when the goalposts are here, and the fans Very are close. here, like three meters away. So yo, they were yeah. swearing at him, calling him. Uh, Funny names. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, man. Uh, those those are the kind of stuffs that I, I know I, I received. Not racism, but yeah, the insults yeah, yeah. definitely. But like, come on now, I got used to them. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. They tr they try to intimidate you or get you yeah. out of the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they can swear, but it's fun <laughs> playing them. It was fun. I enjoyed, I enjoyed my time there a lot. And yeah, um, we got promoted, obviously. Uh, but again, um, in, in the history of, of Palace, if, if I remember well, and from what I've heard was that the team would get promoted and on the very, very, very first season, they would get relegated. Sure. And um, there was no enough budget to bring in uh, players. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so we had to go with our championship squad. I think we only brought in uh, players like, I think it was Barry Banan. Then we had um, Barry, I think he's still playing. Yeah, he's playing for, for Sheffield now. We had Jose and Campana. Jose Campana is playing now for, I think, Betis in Spain. So we didn't beef up our squad that much. But again, you know, I, I had a belief. I said, look, uh, with this squad, we can still do the magic, you know. Yeah. But then uh, the first first five games, uh, it wasn't too good. Uh, it was still Halloween. Yeah. I think we, we lost the first three, four games because the first game we played Spurs at home. Uh, I can't remember what, but yeah, we, we lost uh, a lot of games. And then, yo, we were worried. <laughs> we, the odds were saying we were going to get relegated. Mm -hmm. And we brought, they brought in Tony Pingles. Then that's when you know, I, I started after a few games, that's when I started realizing that it's, I don't think we're going to get relegated here. Yeah. Yeah. Mugo says, Dihachu, I can still hear Martin Taylor battling to say your name. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now they can, they used to, call, they, they gave up actually, they ended up calling me KG. I understand yeah. that even here at home, even here at home, they're still struggling to pronounce my surname. For those who don't yeah. know, it's How is it pronounced? Is it Tihachu? Mm. Tihachu. Okay. Yeah. Now let's let's move to yeah. let's move to the twenty ten World Cup. Um first game against Mexico. You you played that pass to Simpu Shabalala and he scored. How was the I know everyone was happy about that. I, that's not my connection. Definitely. Where have you gone? No, I'm still around. Oh, no, I'm saying, um, this, who was the toughest opponent? No, who was your who toughest was opponent? the toughest opponent? Well, in the EPL, I, I, I would assume you, you're asking about the PSL. Hmm. Uh, I think the, just for, for clarity's sake, I think you can give them both. EPL. EPL, ne? Yeah. I'll have to think about that one. I'll come back to that question. 
later or yeah later okay, let's talk about uh the 2010 world cup first time hosted on south african soil first game against mexico i think it was the 55th minute you guys won the ball in the middle and you made that pass to ushaba and he scored mm. and apparently, apparently it took shaba two years to, to to say thanks to you for <laughs> for that pass let's yeah, talk about that maybe publicly but uh we we used to remember shaba also came to to have a trial at, at crystal paris mm. but then i think then we used to talk about it uh, he would still remind me uh, yo you you gave me that pass but yeah, i remember mm. that game very very well man um was nervous moment uh, everyone was nervous I remember we were sleeping on the day of the game yo oh, at around 5 in the morning the vuvuzelas were going off sure. I said, no 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 how this everyone is looking forward to seeing this game so yeah man it was it was tough um uh, and we went to the game uh, then mexico started with us they were pressing us I'm talking about high pressing. Uh we couldn't combine passes. First up was mm. very 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 difficult. Then yeah, half time yeah, man we had a chat, you know, you have to play the ball quick 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 and then uh they are very slow. When you turn them around, they are very very slow. So we managed to intercept the ball, play quick 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 passes. And then yeah, I saw Shava and um He executed in style. Mm. Great, great goal. But yeah, man, it, the World Cup also was was something special. You know, not everyone gets the opportunity to play in the World Cup. But then, yeah, very special. Yeah, and you got two yellow cards, and you missed the last game against France. No, I'm saying you you got two yellow cards and you you missed the game against France. Can you hear me? Sorry, come again. Um yeah. No no it's fine. I, I was saying um you missed out on the last game because you had two yellow cards. Uh, it must have been yes. frustrating for you, you know, playing against France and France had superstars and they were one of the teams that were touted to be um to win the World Cup. Yeah, damn, bro. Uh in Bloom, you know, uh not far from home. Yeah, yeah, I was hoping to have played but you know uh, A, a lot of factors you know affected the situation affected me getting the yellow card especially against mm. Uruguay we it couldn't get a red card and you know it was frustrating to to be chasing around the ball everywhere so i think i found Suarez and then i got a yellow card uh, but then i didn't know that i was suspended only found out later that i was suspended but then yeah i was disappointed Uh, and yeah, we played a weak France team. Uh, they, I don't know what was happening in their camp, man, but uh, they were so disappointed. Yeah. And the guys did well; they won. Uh, and I think had we won by more than three, four goals, we would have gone through. That's three goals, yeah, That's three yeah. goals. Yeah, but mm. then again, the guys, I think the guys didn't know about it. Uh, mm. I, I was sitting with Kune and then we were cheering the guys up from from the stands, even though they couldn't hear us. But I was praying that look, can we get at least another goal or two? But then we would have gone into the last sixteen. Last sixteen. Mm. No. Cardoso, yeah. after retirement, how much did you miss from the game? Ah, Kada, my man, you know, man, I play with you every day. <laughs> This guy man Maybe. is one of the is one of the good good bowlers that I play with um, mm. here in in Kyalami. 
You missed the game. <laughs> mm. You you were you were in England from 2009 to 2016. Yeah. What made you decide to 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 come back home? Uh, in in 2015, I lost my mom, and then uh, I'm very very close with my siblings. They could, you know, they are the people that could, you know, whenever they have problems, they would just, you know, call me up and, you know, uh, thinking that I would, you know, resolve everything for them. That love they had from their mom, they could get it from me. Mm. So, mm. and then again, some other business opportunities that I thought, look, me being that far, it wouldn't help the situation. Mm. And then... I was like, again, you know, I've been here for some time. Not that I, don't, I didn't want to stay here. And my contract at Cardiff um, was, was was terminated by mutual agreement. So, yeah, my, I decided to come back home. Yeah. And, and you come back home, you rejoin your old team. At some point, did you think, like, maybe you would join Chiefs, Pirates, and Sundowns just to play for them since you never played for those teams? Or was it just a matter of, you know what, Arrows did a lot for me. I'm going back to Arrows. Yeah, that was the case. Um, there was no any other team except Arrows, even though mm. I had I had I had uh, offers uh, from from all Sundowns and Pirates. Uh, but then, yeah, there, there was no any other team that I could join except Arrows. You know? So yeah. I wanted to be home. Arrows is my home. Uh, yeah, then I went back there and I just spent a year with them. Yeah. And and the day that you decided, you know what, I can't do this anymore. What what made you take that decision? Because you used to waking up, going to training, going to games, and then you were like, you know what, no today I'm done. No, I I I felt like it was time for me to to give the young ones a chance, you know. Uh, Aros is well known of, of grooming young men, young players. Uh, I think uh, uh, that season I played my part in, you know, in, in, in encouraging the up, up, up and young coming players who were there. Uh, I hope they also learned a thing or two from me. So I think it was then I decided, like, look, now I've done enough. Uh, let me just, you know, call it quits and maybe mm. try to pursue any other career. Uh, and some of the laws, do you regret, do you regret your decision of coming home or not? No, 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 not at all. Even though I do miss living abroad, uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't regret. I don't regret, boy, yeah. benyati. <laughs> Are you still involved I, in football? Football. Not at the moment, but um, after retiring, I went to coach at um, Royal Eagles with uh, the, the late coach, uh, Roger. Um, I, I tried to get um, involved, you know, to pass through the experience that I had. Um, uh, I think I'm also answering your question, Mr. Lisho. Yeah, I was coaching. Um, yeah, things didn't go well for for me, uh, not in terms of performance. I believe I did well. The team was struggling. I got you know, a few points for the team. And some stuff that I can't mention happened. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I, I went to Whitbank. Uh, it was too late for me to 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 help Wigbank to come out of of relegation. Yeah. Diomansi Kamara, Diomansi Kamara is my ex football player, man. Uh, it was my okay. uh, my teammate at at Fulham. Diomansi used to play for Senegal also. Papa, Papa Sekwa, I will cut my hair, <laughs> my friend. Thank you, great player. Thank you. You are also the best, best, best striker, Diomansi. Uh, Diomansi is still involved. Uh, in, in Senegal, is give him back uh, in Senegal. He was a good finisher. 
Yeah. Okay, I think there's another. I think there's a question um, moving on. Are you I a licensed quota for it? I think you you were busy with your UEFA or are you done with the UEFA yeah. license? Yeah, uh, I was meant to go next week. I think I saw Scott here. I don't know if I should. Yes, yeah, Scott Young is from Cardiff. He was my coach at Cardiff. He's, he's trying to sort me out to go back there. But the feedback that I got from him was that uh, the courses are in January because of this coronavirus. Because of corona. Okay, okay. Football is done now for you. Um, one thing uh, we here in South Africa seem not to be doing well is saving. Um, how important is it for a footballer to plan for life after football? Because now you know that when you play, you're always getting paid monthly or weekly. And now after football, there's no longer that income that's coming in. How important is it uh, for one to plan for life after football? It, it is very important. But one thing that people don't understand is that uh, as a footballer, there is, for, for many of us, there is like two careers that you need to tell yourself that you need to get involved into. That's your mm. football career. Then it's a must. You're going to have to stop playing. So you have yeah. to pursue um, uh, other careers after then. But then, yeah, it's very, very, very important. Uh, I mean, you can you can make as much money as you can in your footballing days, but there is a cut off time, you know. Yeah. Hence, I'm talking about the second other career that one has to pursue. It could be football related. It could be something else. But yeah. And I believe that there's this brand, um, is that is that the sports apparel, um, that you are busy with, and you guys also working with the Malawian FA. Are there any plans to expand the brand in South Africa? in the NFD or some of the apps um, premiership teams? Yeah, we have tried, but unfortunately, nothing came. So mm. we ended up getting the Malawi one. So yeah. it finishes this year. So we'll see after this. I mean, now it's Corona. It's Corona, you know, there's no any other movement. So we'll see after then what's happening. Yeah. You spoke about um, coaching and you're into coaching. Um, what's your take on the standard of football in South Africa? You want me to tell you the honest truth? Honest truth, my man. May Mashangu. Hola, Jayami. I'm very humbled. What are you doing to help me? May is a Fana player, he's a professional player for those who don't know. He's one of the players that I rate highly, uh -huh. uh, even though he's, he's underrated. I'm saying this because um, he's, for me, he's a, he's a complete player. Uh, uh -huh. I'll answer his question in a bit. I want, I want what I'm going to, I want, I want to tell him what I'm going to say now is it's, it's going to be related to what I'm going to answer. He's a complete player. He does he does nothing special to to impress the fans of South Africa. You know, our mindset is of that an old football kind of like style. Okay. We need to dribble. We need to. It's, yes, it's our it's our football culture. Uh, but this guy is he does everything simple. You know, uh, his tactical awareness, technically, is good. So yeah, what I'm trying to do now, May, uh, I'm 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 actually uh, planning on doing, on starting up an, an academy, uh, and uh, I'm I'm also trying to to get the academy to be linked with any of the, you know, big clubs uh, in Europe, so that they can be. Uh, talent scouting, but from a very, very, very young age, kids from the rural areas, mostly who, who never get the, the opportunity to to express themselves. So that's what I'm I'm, I'm trying to work on. Um, so yeah, uh, in a matter of no time, 
hopefully uh, I would have set it up. But um, the standard, going back to your question, yo, I, I'm worried. I'm sure Luena is, is, is someone with football knowledge. You are worried, yes, I am. You are worried, yes, I am. I don't think we 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 groom as much as as much players as we would love to have, and if so, why are we starting at the at the at the at the very late age? You know, I think if you want to develop a player, you need to develop a player from from a very 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 young age. I will tell you the story now. What I'm saying is. Um, I believe I could have been, you know, the best, best player. I believe so. Um, but because I never got proper, proper, proper training or proper development, uh, I couldn't because there's no f development in South Africa. Uh, I remember this other time when I was at Fulham, and I'll never forget this story. And that's, that's what's encouraging me to also try to set up an academy uh, to, to teach these young boys at a very, very young age um, what to do, you know, how you opening up your body when you receive the ball, um, those kind of stuff, you know. So uh, we were in training. I'm, I'm playing for Bafana Bafana. I'm a first team player. So I'm coming back from injury and when you come back from injury the side, uh, before you get into intensive training with the first team, you you train with the uh, exactly. team. Yeah. So the coach was demonstrating a passing drill. And I was hoping he would say, oh, KG, come up here and do this. And then he called a player from the reserves and he said, Hey, Ginge, come up here. Um, show them how do you open up your body when you're receiving the ball. I was so disappointed, you know. Uh, and then I thought, I was asking, I started asking myself questions. How did I get here? Is it by luck or what? Um, but yeah, uh, but it shows that they, they got, they got trained at a very, very young age. The boy was 16 at that time. I was 26. Uh, yeah, and then he had to make an example with him. I was, mm -hmm. I was very sad. But, you know, those kind of stuff, they are the stuff that, you know, make me want to do this thing, start from a very young age. Yeah, yeah. And now, as, as a coach and you've played overseas, you've seen everything that has been happening. What do you want to do differently that will ensure that the youngsters that are coming through your hand, um, they are ready to go and, 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 um, and challenge with, with, with the big guns? Come again, I didn't get your question, sorry. No, my question is, as, as a coach now, what is it that you want to do differently with the youngsters? So that by the time they go through your hands, they are ready to compete in the bigger leagues. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I just want to deal with raw talent, young, young, young players, and you know, get to spend more times on their, on 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 what they lack on in their abilities, mm. and you know, turn them into uh, good, good, good players. You know, uh, I want I want everyone to be. You know, looking up to me and saying, look, this guy is, is the one who can at least save our development in South Africa. There is development in South Africa. But honestly mm. speaking, honestly speaking, where are they going? Yeah. I get where you. are they I get going? You. At what age do they get recognized? Mm. So those are the kind yeah, of things that we need to be working on. Still no kind of... France sports, you must do this more with the suppliers. See, no, yeah, we, we've been doing this. Um, if you can go through our, 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 our timeline, you'll see the interviews we've done. We've done Coach Rolani, May Mahlangu was also here. 
um ye ye ni cholo nyane there's a lot of guys that we've done stuff but yeah mm. and what wanna make is talking a, a very very good point mm. look yeah. we need this man we need this but from a young age don't don't take a boy from the age of 18 and say you're developing him you, yeah. you know too late the process is too late at the age of 13 the boy needs to be knowing at what angle to receive the ball yeah which food to take the ball which food receives which food which food passes so they mm. don't they don't get to teach them these things if they do so at a later stage when last did you hear that a 17 year old has made a debut yeah no, that's true that's true we have less than 2 minutes left i've got five quick questions for you kg before we let yes. you go um toughest opponent i think you said you'll answer this question later <sighs> in the premier league mm. i think i think i think frank lampard was the toughest even though even though he may seem not may seem like he's not the toughest but he was whenever he gets to you you would feel him yeah did you play you ever came across what sorry the dts player the dts player can i give man that past uh Ah, uh, what's this guy who tell me for what him? I'll get back to that one. <laughs> okay. Get back to uh, that one. Favorite player at the moment, be it in South Africa or anywhere in the world. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne. Most embarrassing moment? Most embarrassing. Whew. I think that's when I got a red card. Okay. Um, KG, um thank you for your time big man. Um we really appreciate it that you took your time and have uh, this conversation with us. Um hopefully we'll do it again next time because I feel like there's a lot that we could have spoken about but as you know Instagram gives us only 60 minutes to do it. Yeah, hey, hey man, what's life? <laughs> but then yeah man, thanks for having me in your show. Um, like you know said, you know can't to say You know he's also yeah. except from football he's involved in to sport he's a coach he was a coach okay. for the cheetahs but then oh, okay. he left the cheetahs but he's doing a lot of of um, development in rural areas he's, he's went as far as coaching in rural areas in Kenya also so those okay. are the guys that are also trying to help you know yeah no kg thanks man we'll be in touch for the second one yeah thank you mira Thanks, Thanks guys